When it comes to arcade racing games, the undisputed king of speed is Sega, with the crown jewel being the 1994 legend Daytona USA. It's one of the most iconic racing games of all time, and practically synonymous with the term arcade racer. While getting behind the wheel on an arcade cam that was and still is a blast to play, the desire to bring the fun to home consoles was also present. Out of the attempts made at this task over the years, arguably the most fascinating is a remake on the Sega Dreamcast that released in North America in 2001. Aptly titled everywhere outside of the states is Daytona USA 2001, by Amusement Vision and Genki. Daytona 2001 retains the fun and charm of the arcade classic, but isn't afraid to mix up the experience a little to make it a racer that also shines on its own merits. So with introductions out of the way, this is Daytona USA 2001, an arcade legend celebratory remake. Gentlemen, start your engine. Daytona USA 2001 is all about racing to the checkered flag against the field of high-octane stock cars and the demanding time on fantastical circuits. Clean and fast racing is the only way to make it to the next checkpoint before your time runs out, while also having enough seconds to spare to complete every lap until crossing the finish line. While the controls are simple, with just gas, brakes, steering, plus gear shifting for those who prefer manual transmission, there's two techniques that make the difference between a finish and a time over, drafting and drifting. If you drive behind another car in front of you, drafting with them allows you to go much faster than you normally could, and get the speed you'll need to move up the field, recover when you slow down, and shave off the precious seconds needed to reach that next checkpoint. On the tighter turns where letting off the gas, or pumping the brakes aren't going to keep you on the road and away from the walls, drifting steers your car at a much sharper angle, and can clear those corners if your timing and technique are right. As someone who prefers to race with automatic transmission, the approach I go for is letting off the gas for a split second, then hold down the brake, turning hard in the direction you want to go to initiate the drift angle, then finally alternating between gas, brakes, and counter steering to get you through the turn, and straighten out once you're clear. Getting this down will take a lot of practice to avoid oversteering and spinning out, or even worse, smashing up against the wall. The damage your car takes is far from cosmetic. The more hits you take, the slower your car will be, with taking a pit stop the only way to fix it, but at the cost of time and your position. Best to keep the bumps and scrapes to a minimum instead. Sending opponent cars into the wall, both to get them out of your way and to take an otherwise devastating crash for you is also a viable option. Now the one notorious aspect of the Dreamcast version is that the steering is hypersensitive by default. Even the slightest tilt of the joystick makes the car feel very twitchy, to the point where it's difficult to move in a straight line. You can, however, adjust the sensitivity and the maximum tilt angle to better suit your preferences, but it may take a few races to get a feel that works for you. While the calibration settings are an unfortunate bump in the road, I will say that once I was no longer fighting the controls and got back to focusing on the race and improving my driving with every lap, the fun started to set in, and I got the Daytona USA experience I was looking for. Daytona 2001's tracks are a mix of circuits from previous releases of Daytona USA, plus brand new ones. The beginner, advanced, and expert tracks from the original arcade game return with the visual facelift, but their layouts remain the same which also goes for the two tracks that were new to the Championship Circuit Edition on the Sega Saturn. In addition, there are three brand new courses created, bringing the total to eight. You'll burn rubber on long straights to go as fast as possible, wide bank turns befitting of stock car races, and some tight corners and hairpin turns that you'll have to figure out how to cleanly drift through. The original trio are still some of the most iconic racetracks in gaming with their unique settings, and each requiring more mastery than the last as the turns become increasingly harder. As someone who hadn't played the Saturn tracks before, it felt like I was getting to play on five new tracks instead of three, and the presence here is nice for variety's sake. While the five newer tracks layouts aren't as complex as the advanced or expert tracks, their relative simplicity shouldn't be taken lightly, as they do have one thing in common with the arcade tracks, and that's that they all have at least one quarter muncher turn, or a sharp turn towards the end of the track that demands you drift through it cleanly, or at least not crash too hard against the wall in every lap or else you're not going to have enough time to finish the race. To get even more mileage out of every track, each can be played in mirror mode, in the reverse direction, and a combination of mirror mode with the reverse route, 
which truly makes the tracks feel completely different, and something I haven't seen done in any other racing game I've played. Dinosaur Canyon's Mirror Reverse variant, which turns the final stretch into a full-throttle downhill sprint, was particularly enjoyable. A major part of what made the original Daytona USA memorable was racing in the iconic Hornet, which is now one of many cars available to play in the Dreamcast game. The Hornet's been rebuilt, sporting a sleeker look but still recognizable, with the red and blue or yellow paint jobs, the Gallup logo on the back, and the tires just a bit wider than the car. Joining it on the track are three new cars with designs evocative of various stock cars, plus an unlockable one that may appeal to classic Hornet fans. The remaining five cars throw in some choices for the fun of it, like a pair of fantasy buggies and a literal rocket on wheels. Beyond their looks, every car offers a unique driving feel, with varied balances of grip, acceleration, and top speed. The Hornet's balance sets make it a good fit for any track, the Grasshopper can handle any corner with ease, but goes nowhere fast, and the Unlockable Unicorn is unstoppable on straightaways, but has little grasp on the concept of grip, so your car choice can heavily depend on the course. The driving natures aren't completely set in stone, though, as the choice of tires can alter the grip on any car. Softer tires have better grip, while harder tires will cause more sliding. Car speeds are also determined by their transmission type, with manual cars going a lot faster for those who can master when to shift gears. The transmission type also changes a car's paint colors, but these can also be personalized using a simple yet effective color editor, with three custom slots for every car. I wasn't the biggest fan of the teal color used for the new Hornet, so I changed it to a more fitting shade of blue, which I think completes the remade car's tribute to the original. As a remake, rather than a direct port of the Sega Model 2 arcade game, Daytona 2001's visuals remain faithful to the original, but also takes advantage of the Dreamcast's superior graphical capabilities. There's a lot more polygons with detailed textures, and they all look gorgeous on screen with vivid colors, especially the famous Sega Blue Skies, with some sunsets here and there as well. It's also not Daytona USA if the cars don't get progressively more bent out of shape as they take hits. While hard crashes significantly crumple the car body where the impact happened, brushing up alongside walls or other cars will leave scrape marks on the bumpers and sides. 2001 is also the first version of Daytona on home consoles capable of running at a silky smooth 60 frames per second, which always makes a world of a difference when it comes to selling players on the feeling of driving fast. The replay camera angles also provide cool perspectives on the cars and tracks as you reminisce on your favorite races. The music's likability is going to depend on the player's preferences. All the classic Daytona USA themes, originally composed by Takanobu Mitsuyoshi, were remixed to sound more modern. I personally enjoyed nearly all of them, and the new renditions weren't so drastically changed to the point of sounding unrecognizable. I'll put it this way, if the remixes still put me in the mood to sing along as I'm in the middle of an intense race, then I think they still feel like Daytona USA songs. The Saturn and brand new tracks also have new compositions made for this game. While they aren't cut from the same cloth as the classic themes, they do still fit this game's fantasy racing vibe, and have that kind of sound that you could only find in Sega games of the 90s and early 2000s. Each song also has an alternative version that plays on the mirror track variants to fit their similar but different nature. The track-specific finish jingles and credits themes are also pleasant listens after a hard-fought race. The car sound effects are all solid choices, from engines revving up, to drifting, and smashing up against walls and other cars. My few dislikes in the audio department are the crew chief announcer, he plays it a bit too straight in his line deliveries for me, and the game over jingle. It's the one remix I don't care for since the original vocals weren't used. It would have been nice if the choice to swap in the classic songs was possible, since they do play on the main menu and sound test, but at least I can edit in the original jingle here for my personal satisfaction. You play four. Options are the name of the game of Daytona 2001, which also extends to the various race modes. Single races where you'll get your classic arcade experience of picking a car and track, then get right to racing. You can also tailor the race to how you want to play, with options for the number of laps in opponent cars, and which direction of the track you'll race in. This mode isn't just perfect for getting quick races in, but also makes for great practice on every track, and how the different cars handle, with as many retries as you need, no quarters required. Your best lap and total times are recorded, and new records are saved after entering your preferred three-letter name. 
If you're willing to try to race with all four of the starter cars, you'll unlock the Piwak at Barquetta for your trouble. There's another secret car to unlock if you finish another race with this new car driving in the opposite direction from the rest of the field, the improved Piwak at Barquetta Super. Finishing single races on every mirror reverse track will unlock the rule of the ninth car. Coming in first on any single race also rewards you with a short but sweet credit sequence with different end screens for every car. If you're going solely for fast laps, then Time Attack will pitch you against the records of the in-game ghosts, or ones made from your best times. Sharing the arcade racing fun with a friend is possible in Versus Battle, which includes the option to race with or without eight other AI cars on any track. While racing with another player is the only feasible multiplayer option nowadays, Daytona 2001 did have online play, though I can only speculate how racing on dial-up connections may have been back in the day. I have read in a few spots around the internet that fans are working to reverse-engineer the Dreamcast online functions to restore features like this, so perhaps this mode won't remain abandoned forever. Normally, winning a race in this mode is how you unlock the Red Cat car, but if you have the means to download VMU files, you can get a save that already has it. The same goes for if you want the Javelin without having to play the game for 100 hours. The reason I suggested doing the single races first, to get used to the cars and tracks, is that the experience will come in handy for Championship Mode, which challenges you in four series of four races each, and you accumulate points depending on the place you finish each race. The catch here is that you only get one chance to race on each track, and you have to finish all four of them before you can save your progress, so the true challenge here is consistency, as any mistake that will cost you the race won't earn a lot of points. Leading the race and taking the lead early is the goal here, as you not only get the most points for winning, but also bonus points for every lap led, the number of consecutive laps in the lead, and the fastest lap in the race. You don't have to win every single race in a series, though. As long as you meet the minimum place requirement by the fourth race, you can advance to the next series. So focus on winning tracks you're the strongest on, that way you can hold your lead with the strongest finishes you can manage on your weaker tracks. While the Hornet and Grasshopper were able to carry me through the first two stages, the second half had much faster AI cars, and what I was driving wasn't able to keep up. Any car you have unlocked can be used in this mode, however, and this is why it's beneficial to unlock the Piwak at Barquetta Super in Rule of the Ninth, as their superior stats combined with the right tires and track mastery blew the competition out of the water, and were the true MVPs of my championship playthrough. Coming in first overall is only required on the final stage, a task that both cars are more than equipped for accomplishing. Your victory is rewarded with the Unicorn Car, a prize emblematic of the mastery you've demonstrated, and the pride of becoming a champion, or if you prefer, the newly crowned King of Daytona. While I understand that those wanting an arcade perfect part won't find it in Daytona USA 2001, they'll still find a quality arcade racer that took a well-beloved title and put a new spin on it to give players a lot more Daytona goodness, with plenty of options for where, what, and how they want to race. The new cars and tracks provide new challenges for those who've mastered everything the original game had to offer, on top of a visual glow-up that makes even what's recognizable feel fresh. And if all that sounds like a good time to you, then I recommend going back to the new millennium and taking a few laps. You're in for a Daytona home experience that you won't find anywhere else. Because if you ask me, I think I found my new favorite way to play Daytona USA. As always, this has been fun, and I'm already looking forward to covering another amazing racing game. So I hope you'll check out what I've got in store for next time, and thank you for watching.